So you've read Amor 7's guide, you've read Thomas's addendum, the Voltaic guides, benchmarks, you've done RA benches, maybe you've dug into SDKs, routines, Christmases canceled, YouTube videos. So you think you've seen it all, right? Well, think again. There's a whole fast moving hidden world of routines out there. And in this video, we're gonna give them the attention that they deserve. So first off, why do routines? There's a lot of differing opinions on the value of routines, varying from you must do them, they're mandatory, to they're completely useless. So my perspective is routines are useful for a couple reasons. One is that they help you with developing and sticking to a habit. It's sort of like going into the gym and having, you know, a set of exercises that you plan to do for for each day based on different muscle groups. Humans are habitual creatures and developing habits helps us stick to something and routines can give you a reason to stick to your aim training. Uh, that's one primary value. Another is they bring to the forefront newer, more effective scenarios. There's tens of thousands of scenarios in Kovacs. Uh, some of them are really have no value. One of the most prominent ones being Tile Frenzy and it tends to be also one of the most popular scenarios out there. And it's hard to find scenarios in Kovacs right now. Maybe they'll fix that in the future. So routines kind of give you an opportunity, especially as a newer player or somebody who hasn't played a lot of Kovacs to find scenarios that are meaningful and ordered in a meaningful way. And I personally think I'm, I'm an older gamer. It's really important to change your routines and the scenarios that you're working on in a regular basis. A lot of times I know they get hard stuck because they're just doing the same routine over and over and over again. And then they aren't seeing the results that they think they should be getting and then they get discouraged and sometimes they even give up. There's been tons of studies on the human brain and how we learn and brain plasticity is a, is a common thing that you'll hear if you, if you get into and read about neurology. The scientific consensus is at earlier ages, we have higher levels of brain plasticity as they call it. That's why at younger ages, it's easier to learn languages. And once you get to around 20, that's when it really starts to diminish. You start being less focused on creativity and innovation and trying new things. Um, and the only way to keep maintaining those higher levels of plasticity is to force yourself to do different things and try different things all the time. So your brain is developing new pathways and it takes time for your brain to develop these pathways and it kind of gets lazy and it wants to keep reusing those same pathways that it's developed. So it can take a long time to build new pathways and then establish them. Um, so I think it's very important to just continue trying new routines and, and new scenarios instead of thinking that you just need to keep doing the same thing over and over again until you just one day get better results. As far as paid routines go, my advice to you would be to be cognizant of where you're getting your information from. It makes a lot of sense if you're somebody who's trying to sell paid routines that you would be giving advice that paid routines are needed. If paid routines are coupled with direct one-on-one -on -one coaching with you and you feel like you're at a place where you can't really figure out how to improve based on what you're seeing, then it can be useful. But if you're just going to get a blank paid generic routine, thinking that it's magically going to be better than other routines that you can find for free and the ones I'm going to go over, I don't think that's the case. And one quick note, I'm going to be covering a lot of the lesser known routines, not the ones that just come in like the Voltaic guides and everything. If you're newer to aim training or you haven't gotten into the standard aimer seven guides and Voltaic guides, uh, you want to check out my videos on those subjects. So the first thing we're going to cover is the pure G smoothness routine. This has been one of the most popular smoothness routines out there. And it's the one I always recommend to people when they're trying to figure out a routine to help with their smoothness. Primarily, this is going to help you with tracking, but it also just helps with your overall mouse feel and being able to move, for example, from target to target, if you're doing static or if you're doing uh, TS, target switching. And there's been a lot of changes. There's there's like three or four different variants. The one I'm using right now is the Christmas is canceled variant. It just got updated with some of the more modern versions of the same types of scenarios. There's also a variant by 
Poppy and Envika. I haven't used either of those, but I'm just gonna go ahead and link them if you wanna try them yourself. They're all very similar. The thing that makes this routine so good, in my opinion, is it has a combination of vertical isolation, horizontal isolation, and in-betweens. Scenarios like TAM target switch smooth hard and control hard, which have micro adjustment smoothness along with things like vertical smooth training popcorn small, which is good for uh, just straight vertical isolation and for things like popcorn GTI. Fortnite Glider 360 is also a really great scenario for improving your overall vertical tracking along multiple planes, not just uh, a straight up and down like the vertical smoothness tracking is. And you'll see the Christmas version has Air Angelic for Voltaic in there, which is a good almost reactivity focused, uh, but it is really more about smoothness, but it's got those short strafes inside, which uh, is difficult for a lot of people if you just focus on one straight like centering two uh, along a horizontal plane and or thin gauntlet, you will start to suffer on your short strafes. So it's good. It has a really great variety of smoothness scenarios, which is why it's consistently seen as one of the best ones. Now for speed, um, the ones that I've gained the most benefit fit from are by Unans, who is one of the best target switching players. He just generically is one of the best aimers out there on Kovacs. Um, he is all over the leaderboards. He has a couple routines that I like. Uh, one is called Just Move Your Hand Faster, which is all about just moving your hand faster. Uh, his approach is largely focused around easier scenarios with a lower skill cap. So you're probably asking yourself, well, why is that going to help me with my speed? And the reason why I think it helps is because the way that you push scores on easier types of scenarios with larger targets is by forcing yourself to move your hand faster. You got to actually focus on speed in order to get the, the higher scores. And his speed and flicking accuracy in particular, I've run it the one by one method where you just run each scenario one time and then run the whole routine multiple times. Um, he also has suggested times to run each scenario if you choose not to do the one by one. And I think on the speed and flicking accuracy, it's nice to not just eight, but and improve your overall hand speed, but to consciously think about your placement and flicking accuracy. And one of the routines I've been using lately just to focus on improving my target switching is the pure target switching one by one. Uh, I'll post a link to that. Not too much to really talk about there. It's just a good combination of scenarios that are put together in a thoughtful way. Um, I would suggest running that if you want to focus purely on your target switching. So for the area of precision, and this is going to be mostly focused around dots, either static or moving. It also helps a lot with target switching because target switching is very tempo focused. And once you start getting at really higher speeds, your accuracy and placement might suffer. So focusing on your precision there can help you continue to climb on your speed while still being able to hit your targets consistently. One of the really popular static dots improvement routines that people use is Christmas's canceled flick experimental routine. It still continues to be one of the more popular ones. It has a ton of Pokeball scenarios, which are fantastic for helping you with your precision and landing your shots on your targets. Bardos, who is probably the best static dot player, recently put out a video and he talks about the approach to doing static dots. And one of the key criteria is to do a fast flick between two targets, try to very precisely do the micro adjustment back. And doing Pokeball scenarios really helps you with that idea because you can't just ape and get high scores. The bots have a small amount of health that regenerates. So it forces you to stay on the target for just long enough to kill the dot. And this really helps once you you start increasing your speed in particular. I also like the huddled Pokeball routine. It's along the same lines as Flick Experimental, but it's literally just uh, Pokeball routines. Huddled is also a top aimer, really good with static dots, really good with target switching. So an all around solid routine with a lot of good scenarios in it. And Eerie Cold is another great static aimer. He put together a static dot playlist. You see it has a good combination of like the one wall 4TS and one wall 6TS type scenarios along with the wide wall, the pokeballs and the small flicks. So it's just kind of like a complete static dot uh, playlist. And then finally for moving dots, you don't really see a lot of routines around 
just improving those because a lot of the same types of principles apply to improving your static dots. They just happen to be moving. So working on your target selection starts to become a lot more important. Um, there's a pass through one by one playlist that I've been using lately that I really like. So I'll link that below. As far as reactivity training, uh, this is going to apply a lot to your tracking, especially reactive tracking scenarios like Flickr Plaza and are really beneficial for FPS games that have a lot of fast strafes. Like Apex is a popular one. Also any arena FPS style like Quake or Diabotical. For the longest time, we only really had the Zeke track playlist and the SDK reactivity playlist. They're both kind of outdated. They have a lot of the older scenarios. In particular, they both have one of the most hated scenarios in all of Kovacs, which is air UFO 10 times hard small. You can choose to just pull out that air UFO 10 times hard, then put in air UFO hard small invincible, which is just one bot version and only runs for one minute so that you don't have to play it for 20 minutes straight. Um, or there is another reactivity playlist that I haven't spent a lot of time with myself called Torres Reactivity Conditioning V2. And just looking at the routine itself, it has pretty much all the modern scenarios like Flickr Plaza. It's got Air Voltaic Invincible, Individual, Hard Bots, uh, Fugla XYZ. So it's got all of the scenarios that you would want to run to help practice your activity. So suggest running that if you don't like running the Zeke track or the SDK reactivity. So movement scenarios have always gotten a bad rap in Kovacs because the way that you can get higher scores is essentially cheesing the system to get higher scores. It doesn't really benefit you. You could, of course, just not go for our high scores and alternate the way that you're strafing, emulate more how it would be in the game of your choice rather than just trying to get high scores. But because of how Kovacs is built and how the leaderboards work and how the human brains work with dopamine hits, people just want to get those high scores. So Power put together some movement scenarios recently, which force you to alternate strafe patterns in a more inconsistent way which makes it really difficult to hit the target. So I just put together a quick playlist of all of his scenarios that he created. Make sure you read the description about setting the sound on the trigger when you should be changing your strafe pattern. That's the best way to maximize the score. I also added Vertical Heaven in a playlist. You can choose to take that out or just not run it. That's a really popular scenario um, for practicing you're aiming while you're constantly moving, which is useful for games like Apex Legends, which have a lot of abilities which push you in the air and push you around in general. And finally, there are some good complete playlists, one of which is made by Fallen. I've tried all three types. They're really good just for running through one time all of the scenarios that are in it, and it's just a complete combination of all the different aim mechanics in one run. I think these are good for a variety of reasons. Uh, one, it's for grouping great scenarios into similar types with thought behind it. So it's not just a random collection of good scenarios. They tend to be broken into the aim areas like reactivity, smoothness, flick TS, static dots. I also think it's good for warm up, uh, finding areas that you feel like you're weak in and then focusing on building a complete aim profile. Or if you don't have a specific weakness that you're targeting, it's good for discovering new scenarios. Um, while you're running them, suggest focusing on improving techniques. Uh, for example, with static dots, I'm always trying to focus on two movements only, one fast flick toward the dot and then the micro correct after. If I find that I'm kind of slowly tracing a line between the two targets, I'll stop myself from doing that and I'll, I'll focus on the flick instead. Another good complete playlist I've been using is by somebody from the RA Discord, his name's Kosi. Uh, it's just got a ton of great scenarios all in one spot. It's always interesting to see how other great aimers come up with their own playlists. So that was really all I wanted to put together. I wanted to try to make this video shorter than my normal videos because I'm really just distilling all of this information that you can get on your own into one video. Um, I don't want to take credit for any of this stuff. I get all of my information from places like RA Discord from Christmas is Cancelled Discord, Anima FPS, GitHub, um, Twitter. There's a great playlist compilation uh, by WA, which I will put all these references in the video description. But I just want to give a, a shout out to 
everybody in the AIM community who puts all of this information together for people like me to consume. Most of this stuff is things people do for free on their own time just to help people. I'm really appreciative and thankful of anybody who puts this type of content together for me to just put into videos for other people to get. Thanks for watching my video. I hope that you were able to find some routines that will help you in your AIM training and please let me know in the comments how they helped you or didn't help you and I'll see you next time.